Dr. Deepa Chopra, and uh, it's a great honor for me to be speaking today to Francois Pere, who is actually uh, a board member of the Chopra Foundation and has been so right from the start. Somebody that we look up to for great advice. Uh, Francois and his wife, uh, Magda, are also entrepreneurs in the tech business. And these days, particularly in biotech, they are luminaries in the field, both Magda and Francois. And uh, they're making great inroads in the future of technology as it pertains to well-being. And right now, uh, Francois is engaged in a very uh, remarkable project, which will make a difference to anyone who uh, has a chronic condition or is taking medication for chronic illness. So first of all, welcome, Francois. It's a great honor to have you here. Deepak, thank you so much. It's a pleasure, of course, to be here. I lo love you know, being with you and, and, and talking to you, as you know. And uh, oftentimes, we, we're, we are going more into uh, consciousness and, and, and the like. But today, it looks like our, our subject will be more medicine and how we can impact, you know, uh, you know improve the way medicine is, is delivered uh, you know, today, in, uh, health scales delivered today in, in, in the world, and specifically the US. So, uh, Francois, the, the way I look at pharmaceuticals, particularly the kind of medicines you're looking at also, and the interventions, that too is information and it's a derivative of consciousness. So, everything is consciousness. Everything is consciousness, yes. Yeah. It's just a modified expression of it. <laughs> you have a very fascinating new uh, company and now you actually FDA approved. Tell us about the company. What is the name of the company? What does it do? Because this is very interesting to me as a physician. Yeah. So first of all, let me clarify, uh, Deepak, that the test is not FDA approved. It doesn't need to be FDA approved. Uh, what it is, it's more important. It's been reimbursed by Medicare. And oh, so that means that for people that are on Medicare, which is a lot of people that are over you know, a certain age, obviously, uh, we, you know, they can have access to the test for, for free, basically. Uh, and so we, we are very proud of that because being able to get reimbursement on the Medicare, it, as you know, is a huge achievement. It, it validates truly your test as being not only uh, important, but also reasonable. So it means that this test has been validated from being reimbursed by, by Medicare. It's a very strong stamp of, of approval in, in our community, in the clinical community. But, but thanks for the clarification. It's approved. Okay. And now the other clarification is the test we're talking about today is approved for uh, a, a set of, of indications, mainly depression and anxiety. Okay. So in terms of the reimbursement, the approval is for uh, depression and anxiety. For the other aspect of what the test can do, and we can talk about that later on, uh, we're still working on it because it's it, uh, going to require additional clinical validation. So this is very serious business in the sense of clinical validation of a test. Uh, we don't get reimbursed for for you know something that hasn't been proven, and uh, so that's where we we are very very excited because we feel that for uh, depression and anxiety we believe right now we have the best test on the market, and I'm not saying that to brag. That's not my point. It's just that I want to stress the fact that we had very successful clinical trial. Over 600 patients have been tested with this, and the data that came out is pretty uh, extraordinary. So. Tell so, us about this, depression and anxiety. What's the name of the company? What is the test for? Okay, so the company that I'm talking about here is called Althea DX. And we of course, a, a website. You can go to see it, classical www.altheadx.com. And, and the spelling is A-L-T-H-E-A-D-X.com. Okay, so A-L-T-H-E-A-D-X is the name of the company. Althea DX, D as in dog, X, Althea Correct. Okay. Exactly. And the company was founded many years ago uh, with the idea of using genetics to guide uh, uh, medications. And we started with uh, uh, companion diagnostics, 
for cancer, and we gravitate towards what we call now pharmacogenomics that entails a whole slew of, of drugs. And the one we've been focusing on right now is depression and anxiety, because as we know, before COVID, it was already a huge problem worldwide, and now it's been amplified with COVID. So in fact, we found ourselves in the middle of the storm here that was created by, uh, by this uh, virus uh, all over the world. Uh, that won't surprise you, Deepak, with the kind of work you're doing with Never Alone, that uh, what I'm going to say is to you that the rate of, of uh, depression in, in this country quadrupled uh, under COVID. Uh, and so, you know, there's a lot of people that need help out there. And uh, so that's, that's the thing we're trying to do. How do we do that? Well, uh, our test is primarily a genetic test. We test about 10 genes that are going to be looking at very important function in the body. We're going to be looking at the enzyme that uh, metabolizes the drug to start with. As, as people know, most of the time, the drugs need to be metabolized uh, in, in the body before it's active. So usually it's come as a pro-drug and become a drug after me being metabolized. So those enzymes in the liver mostly are responsible for metabolizing those drugs. Then those drugs need to be transported. And uh, for example, if it's depression and anxiety, mostly obviously going to the, 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 the brain and need to be transported there through transporters and also need to be uh, able to enter the, 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 the nerve cells, the, the, the neurons, through receptors on, on those neurons. So we've got two different aspects here. One aspect is the, the ability to metabolize a drug. The second aspect is ability to bring the drugs to the right place in the body, right? So all of that is uh, looked at uh, with 10 different genes. And what we're looking at is mutation in those genes that alter the normal uh, uh, meta metabolism, for example, if it's a metabolizing enzyme, or the normal transport, or uh, you know the ability of the receptor to get the drug inside the cells. So this is really what we're looking at. And in addition to that, uh, the algorithms, so of course, this is uh, driven by AI and, and uh, machine learning and all that jazz. But uh, at the end of the day, the test is beyond genetics. It's also taking in account very important data in drug to drug interaction. We are the only test out there that is now reimbursed by the government that also does drug to drug interaction. And it takes also a much bigger or holistic approach, looking even at you know, over the counter uh, uh, prescription that the patient is taking, uh, lifestyle things like smoking and others, even uh, diet and, and mostly supplements that the patient is taking. So we take this whole bolus of information per, per patient and out of that, the, the algorithm, uh, you know, send, give us a, a, an answer of what this patient is uh, taking as a drug and you know is, is it good for the patient or not okay and, and let me ask you a question you know because we have a lot of lay people uh, watching us now yeah. let's, let's take a good example 45 year old african american woman uh, who is struggling with depression seeing a primary care doctor and uh, you know she's getting some benefit from her medication and uh, how would this help her? What's the, what's the process through which, say, this 45-year-old Afro-American woman struggling with depression on various medications with a primary care doctor? So she would have, nowadays, most certainly... The process she will go through. Yeah, she would have most to need nowadays, hopefully, at least a Zoom meeting with a physician. The mm -hmm. physician would be discussing the depression uh, condition with her and tell her, look, uh, you know, just wanted to tell you that there is a test out there that could help you and could help me, most, most importantly as well, uh, direct uh, the, the medication you're taking for your depression much better. It's been proven in the clinic. And so would you be interested in, in taking the test? The, the woman would say, yes, I'm interested. So the company would be able to, to send directly to the woman the swab, it's a buckle swab, um, and the woman would be able to, to swab herself. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very simple thing, a couple of minutes uh, of, of swabbing your cheek, put that back into the kit, send that back to the laboratory with, with, a, with a doctor's approval, uh, and we would be running the test, sending back a very simple two-page report 
to the doctor. And that report briefly would tell the doctor the drugs she's already on, are they okay? Are the drugs she would be able to be on? I don't know if you see that well. There's a green uh, uh, column here for the drugs that are working for her. And then on this side here are the ones that be, care, be cautious with. And in, for example, for this patient, the black, the black box here shows that in fact, uh, this drug is really counterproductive for the patient. So uh, with this information, this is just information. It's not a diagnostics. This is information for the, for the physician to be guided on what will work with her on a new indication, but also can tell her already what's not working with her if she's already on a medication uh, for depression that's not working with her. So it, it has a double, dual role and that's very powerful because oftentimes it's not just because people are not on the right drug, is that they're also on the wrong drug. And, and so that's really what those things are so uh, incredibly important at doing. To give you just some numbers, uh, on our clinical trial that we conducted, like I said, with over 600 patients, uh, what I was more excited about is the rate of remission. One has to understand that the rate of remission uh, with the uh, current standard of care for depressed patients is really bad. I mean, you get numbers like, you know, um, 70 to 89% of, you know, depending on the region, the, the, the genetics and all that, do not, do not achieve remission using current standard of care. 70 to 89%. In our study, 13% of the placebo, meaning the one that did not get tested, the patient that did not get tested, um, you know, 13% of, of the patient that didn't get tested got, you know, went to remission, okay? When we looked at the tested patient, we moved to 35% DPAC, a huge increase. So from 13%, that went to remission. Remember, remission is a goal. You, you're done with your depression, at least for the time being, and you can move on with your life and hopefully take on some additional tools that you are uh, you know, talking about all the time to help you beyond. When you have severe depression, most of the time you need some help. And oftentimes it's, it's got to be some, some kind of you know, uh, drugs, uh, because if you're too severely depressed, it's very hard to do that on your own. But once you get into remission, that's an opportunity to do something you know, different, meditation, yoga, and all that. So that's hugely important to be able to bring people into remission in the first place. Like I said, you know, using our tests, we increase the rate of remission by 170%. We're talking about basically- One more question. So far, what I've understood, this is amazing, but what I've understood is, here's this woman, she's 45 years old, she's under the physician's care, she's taking drugs, I understand the process she's being helped. How about now let's take another example. Uh, a 50 year old uh, white Caucasian male, he's depressed and he goes to his primary care physician, uh, no medication at the moment. The um, primary care physician is thinking of putting this patient on medication. That patient, can he get more precise information into which drugs may or may not work. Exactly right. You, you, you got it perfectly. In fact, it's even a better scenario, obviously, if the patient is not already on medication, because as you know, uh, you know there's an issue with being on the, on the wrong medication or a medication that doesn't work for you. It messes up your, your receptor in the brain. So the next medication may not be as efficacious. So it's, it's a perfect scenario. If a patient come and now, you know, for whatever happened in his life, there is an episode of, of severe depression, the physician can use our test right away and that's the best scenario because rather than again using the standard of care let me remind people here that the standard of care is basically trial and error physicians don't have any clue out there i mean they do have you know psychiatrists specifically have but um you know and i come back to that point later but technically a, a typical physician will not have a good idea so this test is a very objective way to prescribe at least a drug that will not do any harm to the patient and, and that's hugely important. When, just to give you an example of the kind of harm you can do to a patient, when you look at the metabolizing enzyme, you can have you know, ultra metabolizer, for example, you can have a mutation that makes this enzyme ultra metabolize your, 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 the drug, meaning that when the drug gets in, it's metabolized immediately, you don't get any benefit from the drug. So technically, you know, what you do that, if, if this is really the drug you want, you augment the concentration significantly. 
Okay, that's one aspect. Maybe even worse is a poor metabolizer. So some of the mutations are going to make this enzyme, again, dysfunctional in the body at some level and will not be able to metabolize properly the drug you're taking. That has even worse uh, you know, case scenario because you, know, you could then accumulate that drug, it's fully metabolized, and before you know it, this drug is accumulating in your, in your blood at level of toxicity that are really bad for you. And that's one of the side effects we see often with drugs. They're fully metabolized, accumulate in the bloodstream, and, and get you sick. So the drug that's supposed to, to help you is making you sick. Okay, so just this you know, type of information on what we call pharmacokinetic of the enzyme, meaning is it, is it metabolizing fast, that's why it's called pharmacokinetic, or is it metabolizing slow or not metabolizing at all? That is one of the key questions we're asking when we look at the genetics of the people. And that has a huge impact on how these people respond to drugs. I get it. So this is very, and what is the test called exactly? What is it called? ID genetics. Neuro ID genetics. Neuro ID genetics. Correct. Okay. And what does ID stand for? Just because it's ID is you. It's just for ID. Okay. Neuro genetics. Okay. Yeah. I get it. So now let's talk about this a little bit further because, you know, as we look across the landscape of depression, there are all kinds of disorders that are associated with depression. There's free-floating anxiety, there's situational anxiety, there is uh, uh, reactive depression, there is bipolar depression, there is schizophrenia, on and on. People have all these classifications. Bottom line is there's common factor of sadness in all these people, although there are precise diagnostic uh, categories of depression. And as you said, it's been pretty much guesswork with medication. Right. With medication, you get a remission in acute psychosis, and then you can add the lifestyle, talk therapy, good sleep, stress management, meditation, right. nutrition, which is becoming very important now because the microbiome also 90% of the serotonin in the body comes from the microbiome, from the gut. So right. you know, all these things, diet, relationships, emotional resilience, grounding, balancing circadian rhythms, managing stress, mindfulness, breath control, awareness, all help. So this is part, as you know, uh, of the Chopra Foundation's efforts through Never Alone, where we have an AI chatbot called PV, who's actually making a remarkable difference right now because people are more comfortable engaging with her because she's a machine. They feel they can be vulnerable with a machine. And uh, she has intervened already uh, in many suicidal attempts, as you know. So what we're looking at is a holistic approach to the treatment of depression where pharmaceuticals have a very important role in those who are acutely in a phase that could lead to psychosis or already is in psychosis or the depression requires pharmaceutical intervention. And once it does that, then we bring in all these ancillary ways to actually further the recovery or prolong the remission or take the patient ultimately down the pathway of decreasing reliance on medication. Do you agree with all this, uh, this kind of approach? Oh, absolutely. You know, not only do I agree, Deepak, I, I absolutely believe that's the only path. I mean, clearly to me, uh, like I said in, in our earlier discussion, the medication are very important, and you said that very well, on the acute phase of, of this kind of disease. It, hopefully, you know, that, that should be the truth for every disease, which is not the truth right now, unfortunately. We, we, we treat so many chronic diseases with drugs, and that's, that's another aspect of pharma that we, we, we don't have time to discuss. But, but clearly to me, the goal should be, yes, you have to treat the acute phase of any disease, obviously. Uh, and, and depression is no different. And, and oftentimes the only, you know, the best pass is drugs. And that's why we're saying, Deepak, that's why we're so happy and excited about what we are developed here, because, you know, the, the most impress impressive number of what we have is, you know, the uh, remission rate. And like you said, you know, and I'm talking about getting remission in 12 weeks, which in, in, for depression is 
quite quite extraordinary. So you know you, when you go from 13% to 35% of your patient that go into remission, that open up a whole new world for this patient to take care of their mental illness problem. They, they already they already can discover now. Wow, I can overcome that. And then with some help, you know, clearly they've been on drug, but now they have, you know, their you know, their head is a bit above the cloud, let's put it that way. And now they can look at solutions that you provide and, and that never alone provide, that uh, you know, uh, try to empower the, the patient to go to the next level. So it's not, you know, so their acute condition doesn't become a chronic lifelong condition, but is episodic. Hopefully that's the only episode, but you find the other tools that you and I know so well work. I mean, you meditate every day, I meditate every day, uh, you do yoga every day, I don't do yoga every day. But I mean, those kind of things, I play tennis and I love it. It's, it's a wonderful way to also exercise. But what I'm getting at is that it's so important that people understand this should not be, you know, again, that's how you create addiction. This not, it, it should be a short uh, term, uh, you know, the value of the drug is for the shorter term and then you move on. So what I'd like to share with you is that uh, at Never Alone and Chopra Foundation, of which you are um, a board member, we can start to promote this test to our population and where it is pertinent, uh, they can be helped. What do you think? Yeah, we love that. So let yeah. us let us promote this test for now, get some more data, keep feeding us with the research, and uh, we will uh, also promote it on the foundation site uh, to those who can be helped. So let's call this conversation a new, precise, and personalized test and treatment for depression. Conversation with Francois Ferre, CEO. Are you CEO and founder? I am the chairman of the company. The chairman, the, yeah. uh, chairman of the company, Altia DX. And then put the name of, uh, Carolyn, put the name of the uh, test, which is, what is it, genetics ID? Uh, 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 yeah, uh, neuro ID genetics. Neuro ID genetics. Put the name of the test and the link to the website. And uh, the sooner we can put it out there, more people we can help. Wonderful. Okay, Carolyn, is that good? Yes.